Hi, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. In this week's guitar lesson, we're going to take a look at two things. We're going to talk through a right hand percussive finger style technique that's actually fairly easy to play. I'll show you how to do that. And then we're going to talk through how songs like this, the singer songwriter style of music, how they're written. You know, you know, some of the techniques that I've picked up listening to artists like James Taylor, one of my all time heroes. And I actually don't have the lesson this week split into two parts. I'm going to cover everything in this video. However, if you want to download the tablature and get Get access to the on-screen tab viewer, which is interactive, and really goes into detail about everything that I specifically played. Uh, you can get those things by going to ActiveMelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP372. All right, so as I mentioned, there's going to be two things that you're going to learn by the end of this video, and they're both incredibly useful uh, skills. One is this right-hand percussive finger style technique. Now, I picked this up from James Taylor, one of my all-time heroes. The very underrated guitar player. I mean, he's really, really good. If you've never studied James Taylor, just pay attention to what he's doing on the guitar. It's just an incredible. Uh, but I've tried to do his stuff for years. I'm still not as good as him, him, and I certainly can't do it the way he's doing it. But this is my version of it. And this is perfect for uh, playing along with you know singer-songwriter stuff if you're singing and playing guitar. It's also great for solo composition. So we're going to be going through that. We're also going to be talking about how songs like this are composed. How do you take chords from the chord family, put them together? What are some of the techniques that I've learned from John Prine or, I don't know, Dan Fogelberg? You know, Christopher Cross, you know, all those kind of singer-songwriter guys. I kind of get this vibe from them. That, that, and so anyway, I'll be sharing that. Um, so let's start off by talking about this right-hand uh, finger style technique. I call it a percussive finger style technique because it very much um, simulates what you would hear with a drum kit. With a drum kit, the drummer is kicking using the kick drum on the one and the three. And then he's using the snare drum on the two and four, typically. That's a typical drummer setup like a backbeat rhythm. So you have kick, snare, kick, snare, right? One, two, three, four. Well, we can simulate that with our right hand. So we're gonna use our thumb as our kick drum, so that's gonna happen on the one and the three. And then the back of my fingernails is gonna come down and just strike the, the notes a little more aggressively than I would normally on the two and the four. So let me just demonstrate. I'll just mute the strings here, but you can see it. So we have one, two, three, four. If you can do this, you're halfway there. So that's what, when I so when you listen to this you can hear it. You can hear that kick snare thing and it just sounds like there's a drummer playing along with you. Okay, so that's the first thing uh, and then the the second part to that is between the 1 and the 3, I'm going to use my index finger uh, to play on the and between the 1 and the 3. So it's 1 one and let me just mute them so we have one and two and then use your ring finger after the two and so on the and after the two so it's one and two and that's thumb index scrape ring you can write that down if you need to but that's the order and so we're going to do thumb index scrape ring thumb index scrape da da over and over again. Listen to this. So now I've got a little bit of a rhythm going on just by using my fingers there. And it's not it's kind of like patting your head and rubbing your stomach kind of thing at first. But you'll get it going and then it you like second nature. It happens very quickly. Listen to it with a D minor chord. Now watch this. Same technique. My right hand didn't change. Just watch my right hand. So you can play something more up tempo like that, or I can slow it down and play something. You know, very slow and pretty. Uh, both of those are using the same technique. So just remember, I'm just pointing that out so you can understand why that technique is um, useful. I'm not going to go into any more detail really about the right hand technique because it's just going to bog this lesson down. So I'm not going to you know, talk about where the thumb should be played or the index finger. But I do have all of that in the tablature if you're a premium member. So you can get that. I've also got the on-screen tab viewer which you can highlight. You can slow down sections and you can get as in the weeds as you want with exactly what I was playing. 
All right, so now let's get back to the song. So we're playing this song in the key of A, and I want to start off and just mention the A chord family. What is an what is a chord family? Well, those are the notes in the major scale. For, so in the key of A, you'd have... There's your major scale. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Each one of those notes is also a chord. And there's a formula for that. The, you know, the one, four, and five are major chords. The two, three, and six are minor chords. I put all of that in EP370. So that was a lesson I did a few weeks ago on secondary dominant chords. Check that lesson out. Go to about four minutes into the video and you'll see where I talk about the chord family and how the number system works. So I'm going to assume you have that knowledge. And so one of the techniques you can do once you understand that chord family is if you play the, the root note, so in this case it would be the A because that's the key we're in, you play that as your bass note, but then you play the other chords on top of that. So you don't match the bass note to the chord, you just stay on the A for the bass notes. For example, instead of going to the B minor, the C sharp minor, like we would if we were playing the chord family. Listen to this with the A in the bass. Hear the difference? There's your D, there's your E. Now that's an E with an A in the bass. It sounds pretty. It's got a much prettier sound. That's one technique that those guys use all the time. I think of you know, Christopher Cross, for example, I'm a big Chris Cross fan. Chris Cross, that's another band. But anyway, uh, he was he was uh, uh, just a master at that. And interesting side note on Christopher Cross, Stevie Ray Vaughan's number one guitar, you know, the, the, the beat up one that you always, his most famous one that you see him with. Apparently, Christopher Cross owned that guitar prior to Stevie Ray, sold it to somebody in Austin, and then Stevie picked it up. I thought that was kind of interesting. You just, they're so different, you know, you can't imagine those two guys with that one guitar. But anyway, um, so that's the technique there, is playing the, um, the, the chords of the chord family using the tonic as the bass note, and don't change the bass note. And that's what I'm doing in the beginning of this. Notice that A, the fifth string, the open fifth string, stays there the whole time. So if I were to call out the chords, it's one, five, one, A, E, A, and then I go to the D, which is the four. One, five, one, four. But it doesn't, listen to how boring that is. As opposed to me holding the bass down, uh, the A in the bass, rather. It's much prettier sounding. Um, so, that's what's happening there. Now, to start this off, I actually did th this little, little pickup note, the little, a little bass part. That's the open sixth string, a hammer on to the second fret, and then the open fifth string. Now, I got that from, I was thinking of Handyman by James Taylor, and he's, he does that song in the key of D. Right? That little pickup thing. But you hear that in a lot of music. I mean, there's a lot of like singer songwriter stuff in the key of A or in the key of E, that, uh, or in the key of A or in the key of D that uses that. Tears in Heaven, Clapton. Right? So it starts with into the A chord using that right hand technique. And then I go into the E chord, but I'm just playing, like, may, play your E chord, but then don't use your. Uh, middle finger if you're playing an, a normal E chord. You're just playing that much of it. It's the E chord with the A in the bass, but it, and in fact I use these two fingers. I think that's easier. So it goes like this. And I go right into that E. Now this is the only place in the whole thing where I kind of break from the uh, that that rhythm that I was showing you with the right hand. I, I just change it up a little bit just to because the timing is a little different. Going right into the five chord and back to the one chord is a James Taylor lick. And, uh, you know, he does that even in Handyman. Right? He's going from the one to the five, back to the one, quickly though. Like, you don't, you don't do it right on the beat. It just happens like that. Okay, so. Then we go to the D. And what I did for the D, I kept the bar there. And I put my middle finger down on the 3rd fret 2nd string, ring finger on the 4th fret 4th string. 
I'm playing strings two, three, and four, pulling them with these three fingers. But then you keep that open fifth string the whole time. So it's like this. And that one time, I, since there's like that open space, I hit the bass twice, like a bass player would do. And back. Okay, now this time, listen. Hear the difference? Now that sounds really weird. It sounds like a very complicated chord arrangement. You're gonna see that all I did was, I kept the A in the bass, but instead of me playing the D, I played a D minor. And it's a minor four chord, and we hear that all the time. So that's a technique that um, I've talked about quite a bit, where if you're playing a the one chord, you go to the, the four, the minor four, and then back to the one. It's a nice little tension and release thing. So we're gonna play the, um, the D the first time. The second time, I'm playing the D minor like that. And so that's my ring finger on the third fret second string, index finger on the second fret third string, and middle finger on the third fret fourth string. It looks like a D7 chord shape, but you're playing it there with the A in the bass. Easy to play. But now you know where it comes from. So you can see that all this at the beginning is just chords in the chord family. Here it is. Just to mix it up, threw in the minor, and then I went. And that's just the open one, two, three, while I'm holding down that D minor chord shape. Okay, now I get, so that's like the intro part. Now I go into the verse, and the verse goes like this. So that's just an A chord, I'm barring there on the second fret. And now I'm gonna be using that right hand technique from here on out, everything that I showed you uh, earlier. There's, pinky goes down on the fifth fret second string. Now you could also pl play the open one string if that's easier. I just think it's easier to bar there. So now the bass line starts to walk down now. So we've, we've just been holding the A through the whole intro. We've got the A there. Now I'm gonna go to a G sharp. And the, the bass is gonna walk down. It's gonna go A, G sharp, G, down to the F sharp. So. Now I played the open one, or sorry, the open two string there. We'll put my ring finger on the fourth fret, um, sixth string. Index finger goes down on the 2nd fret 4th string. And then to, to play that same note, I use my pinky there on the 4th fret 3rd uh, string. Just so that I could hit the scrape with my, you know, that percussive thing with my fingers and hit the right notes. And that was the only way I could think to do that. What is that chord? It's just an E chord with a G sharp in the bass. A G sharp is in the E chord, you're just changing the bass note. So, Then we're gonna go down. I'm gonna keep my index finger there on that second fret uh, fourth string. My middle finger is on the third fret sixth string. So I'm playing the third fret sixth string with my thumb. Index finger on that uh, second fret fourth string. And then when I do the slap, I'm playing strings two, three, and four. Open second and third string. Okay, now we're gonna go down one more. Now the normal chord that you would use in the chord family, because that's the sixth chord, the F sharp minor is a six, would be an F sharp minor. But to keep it interesting, I played an F uh, sharp seven, so I made it major. So I just made the sixth chord major. And you should know also, in reference to EP370, the secondary dominant uh, lesson, you should know why we made that a major now. Because when you look at the next chord after that, it's a B minor. Well, what's the five chord of B minor? Right? Ah, so that's where secondary dominant, you can already, you can hear why that worked. Um, so it created this tension out of nowhere and then we released the tension. Ah, okay, so we go to the B minor, which is in the chord family of A. So it's once you start to look under the hood here, you see that these are all just the same chords in the chord family, but we took that four chord and we made it minor. And now we've taken the sixth chord and we've made it major. So you can always kind of reverse them if you if you need to. But if you're going to make a major chord, it's nice 
out of a minor chord, it's good to go to its relative minor to release the tension. <laughs> Typical um, scenario then. All right, let's take it back. Let's back it up from the beginning. That's how I played that F sharp major or F sharp seven chord. It's the same as an F sharp, like this is the E chord shape, but take your pinky out. That's your F sharp seven, and I just played right uh, play, uh, went right up the uh, chord like this. So it's three, two, one, and then keeping that bar there, I just switched the the fingerings, so they just jump up a set of strings. And now I make my bass note the fifth string. And what that gives me is the B minor seven chord, which is nice because to get from this um, F sharp seven chord, you just move these two fingers up. Very simple. Look at this. There's that technique with the right hand. And then we just go up two frets. And that's the C sharp minor seven, which would be your three chord. You do one, two, three, right? Um, so we have a two chord, three chord, and then I'm going to hit the sixth string, the open uh, E string. And the reason for that, that would be your five chord. And I could have just went, you know, and played an E7, but what I ended up doing was now what is that? That sounds complicated, right? It, all it is is the E6 chord to an E9 chord, and then an E6 chord to an E9 chord. It's the 6 to the 9 thing, which I've talked about many times. And so that's all that is. It just gives it like a real nice um, singer-songwriter kind of vibe. And you might play around with it and find some different things you can do with it. Make your own music out of that. Just find different voicings for it. But that's all it is. It's just the E6 to the E9. And then I went to get back to the same loop. That's just a little lick there. I'm thinking A, since we're playing the key of A, A major pentatonic scale pattern. There's your A major uh, pentatonic scale for A. Pattern one, pattern two is here, and I just went into pattern two, slid up to here, ring finger on the sixth fret third string, middle finger on the fifth fret second string, and then I came down and went, it was sloppy. That's a quick slide from the fourth fret to the fifth fret on the third string, back to the fourth fret, down to the second fret, all on the uh, third string. So you go like this, and then you go down to, from four to two on the fourth string and then right back to your A note, which is same loop, right? Let's take it from the beginning, play up to that point. Back to the one. That's the, okay. The second time through, I went just to give it a little variation. So I'm holding down the bar there on that second fret for the A chord, and then I put my middle finger down on the third fret second string, ring finger on the fourth fret third string. Now what is that? That's a harmonized third in the A scale. It's the A major scale, Do Re Mi Fa Sol La Ti Do. Now, if you want more information on what a harmonized third is, you can refer back to lesson EP363, where I go through harmonized thirds and harmonized sixths and how to work them in. But that's all that is. 
that's exactly the same. Then we go down to this um, this next chord, which is that E minor chord with the G in the bass. The only difference is this time I did uh, played the open second string. Put my index finger down on the second fret second string. We go back to that F sharp seven. But that time I came up, just played, it's still an F sharp seven, but I added my pinky here to the fifth fret second string. With a little hammer on with my middle finger. Okay, now instead of going to the B minor seven, I came up here to this D major seven. See, see the difference? It's, it has a much, it pulls you in a different direction. Now why did I use a D major seven? It's another chord that's in that chord family. It's the four chord, but you can play different versions of the four chord. So I could play a, a D7, I could play a D6 or 9, I could play a D major 7, and that's what I'm playing there. So I've got my pinky on the uh, seventh fret, second string, middle fingers on the sixth fret, third string, ring fingers on the seventh fret, fourth string. And then I've got the bar there on the fifth fret. And I'm playing it the same way, I've just got the bass note there on that fifth string. Then I go to the C sharp minor, seven. Then back to the E. Now the first time I went, this time I, I go. Another kind of singer songwriter uh, walk up thing. So it's just a hammer on with the thumb on the bass, the open six string. And then we come up and hit the open one string. So it happens at the same time like that. And then I go to this position where I've got my ring finger on the second fret third string and my middle finger is on the second fret sixth string. So I play those at the same time with the open one string. So you have. And then I take that and slide it up to the fourth fret and play it like that. And that's just a walk up. The bass is just walking up, just like we did the you know the first time where we walked it down. We're walking it back up now, and then I went to get us back to the intro. That's just a slide on that third string from the fourth fret to the sixth fret, back to the fourth fret, second fret, fourth fret, fourth string, and again that's just um, major pentatonic scale for A. And then we go back into the intro. Played it exactly the same. And then the only difference is the second time. I just ended it right there. Played an A. That's barring there on the second fret. And then I've got my pinky up here on the fifth fret, first string. Played a full A chord. And that's really all there is to this. And you can see that we've uh, just taken chords from the A family and we've just you know, we haven't really added any chords outside of that. You know, we've made some of them um, minor and some of them major that would, would have been minor. But that's really all there is to it. The only other thing to that would be adding that uh, bass note of the root. So like in the intro, where we stay on the bass. And you might play around with that. You'll, you'll start to find that you can create some really cool sounding compositions by doing that. Just hold down one bass note, like an E, and then play the chords in the E family on top of that. It's pretty cool. Let me back up and play through this one more time. And that's going to actually wrap up this lesson. I covered all the material. Uh, I do hope you check out Premium Membership where you can have access to, obviously, the tablature, all the MP3 jam tracks that I have, and just hundreds and hundreds of lessons like this that are in-depth. And just they're all designed with the same premise, which is to give you ideas, you know, things that you can do to help you improvise and help you write songs and just have a much better understanding of how it all works. Let me back up and play through it one more time and then we'll see you next week for something new. Here we go.